Hi everybody, and welcome to Going Off. This time we are talking about the Time Spiral Remastered previews that have just started coming out. We've got white and blue ones to talk about today. I'm Chris. I'm Hallie. And I'm Jordan. And we're just going to jump into it. This is an all reprint set, so it's not like we're talking necessarily about new cards. We're just talking about nifty cards that are coming out. So Hallie, why don't you lead us off? So we're going to be talking about some of our all-time favorite magic cards today, because there are some really great ones in this set. And I wanted to start with one of my all-time favorite magic cards, which is Restoration Angel. It is a 3-4 angel for three and a white. It has flash and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to exile a non-angel creature and then return it to the battlefield under your control, otherwise known as blinking a card. And I just, I love this card so much. I have so many fond memories of playing it. It was in standard when I first started playing Magic, and I played it in a deck with Thrag Tusk. I've played it in decks with Snapcaster Mage and all kinds of creatures with great ETB effects. And I love all of those kinds of creatures, and Restoration Angel just makes all of them even better. It's really funny that you bring up that this is our favorite Magic cards with how many of them are reprints, because so far with it being white and blue having previewed, this is my Canadian Highlander deck just reprinted and Time Spiral remastered. Right? Restoration Angel is a card I have used for a very long time, long past its uh, useful date, I would say, in Canadian Highlander because it's just so much fun. So I'm really excited to see it with this old friend. Yeah, uh, Restoration Angel was definitely one of my favorite cards as I was starting to get into Standard back in the day because I got into Standard right during Innistrad Return to Ravnica. So like that Delver Standard deck that was just blue-white Delver with Restoration Angel and Snapcaster, that was my jam. Snapcastering Vapor Snag like twice in one turn was always the best feeling. That is the most Chris sentence I think I've ever heard. <laughs> it's funny that we started off with Blink Alley because the next card we want to talk about today is Mangara of Corindor. Mangara is very good, and it's one of those fun little magic cards that punches high above its weight when you know the rules of magic a little bit better. So in this case, you have Mangara, you tap, you exile Mangara and target permanent, and then you use, oh, I don't know, something like Restoration Angel to blink Mangara. Suddenly, Mangara will not be exiled, but the other permanent will be. It's mean. It's fun. I love seeing this card. Mangara also gets new art in this set, which is super cool. Uh, speaking of death and taxes, here's a card that doesn't go in it at all. That's terrible. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, now you have to keep this in. Le leave that in. <laughs> and uh, leave this part in, referencing the part that you have to leave in. So next up, we have Porphyry Nodes. And I'm probably saying that wrong, because who knows? There's a lot of consonants all right next to each other in that. But it's an enchantment for a single white. It is, at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy target creature with the least power. It can't be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for least power, choose one of them. And when there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice Porphyry Nodes. So in Time Spiral Block, this was a color-shifted printing of Drop of Honey from way back in the day, which was green. And there's no way green should ever have this effect. This feels more correct in white or black. But it's just one of the weirder, slower Wraths that takes like 12 turns to actually work. <laughs> if we're talking about Wrath, this would be the epitome of uh, Revenge is a dish best served cold because it takes, you know, 18 turns to actually Wrath everything. I've seen it used in constructed formats, like it does have homes, but it's always very weird deck, but I've seen it used so that like you're taking out opponent's decks who rely on having very few creatures in play. I feel like I remember seeing this in play in like a modern pro tour or a modern world championship or something, but I can't remember what deck it was in. Was it maybe in like a Jeskai control deck or something? Yes, there is. I forget exactly who it was, but there was a play that was very cool where there, the opponent had one creature left on board, but whoever controlled the Porphyry Nodes wanted it to stick around an extra turn. So at the beginning of the upkeep with the Porphyry Nodes on the stack, they activated a man land that was going to be big enough to not be the least power on board. Just so it would kill their opponent's creature, there's still technically a creature on board for that turn, so Porphyry Nodes stays around. But basically that's why I like Porphyry Nodes, is because like normal rads are great and powerful, but they're kind of boring because they just do their thing, the board is reset, and we go from there. Porphyry Nodes allows for a lot of really weird lines of play. So the next card we wanted to cover is Palace Jailer. This is a card that was first printed. Uh, 
I hate, <laughs> and, lo- I hate and love this card, Hallie. But yeah. both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. this is a card that I've probably cast against you, Jordan. You absolutely have, as have other members of our Canadian Highlander uh, play group, as this is very good in Canadian Highlander. It's very good. So it's a it's a creature. Uh, the ETB is, and it makes you the monarch, which is great. It's card draw in white. And when it ETBs, you exile a creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. And the, the cool thing about how that's worded is that even if the palace jailer is removed from play in some way, you still get to exile the creature and you still get to be the monarch, which is pretty sweet. Do you know how many times I've killed the palace jailer thinking that I will suddenly be okay (laughs) again in the game and then sat there, waited for my opponent to give me back my creature and them with a smug smile? So many times. So many times. I know, Jordan. I've been there. (laughs) (laughs) Up next, we've got my favorite bird wizard, I think, that's ever been printed in Magic. Aven Mind Sensor has got a fancy new frame with old art. I love that combination. So it is a 2-1 creature bird wizard. I love this already. Flash flying 2-1 for 2 and a white seems great. But it has an extra effect. If an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top four cards of that library instead. Yep, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten hosed by this card. Oh, it is my favorite thing to do. Uh, the low end, of course, and this is funny to call this a low end, is your opponent has a fetch land on the board and would like to tap it and sacrifice it to go digging for that land they need. Then you flash this in, and all of a sudden, instead of searching through their entire library, they get four cards to hope they hit a land that shares the land type they need. At the high end, this messes with things like Demonic Tutor very well. Next up, we have another... Uh, Death and Taxes All-Star, at least in the sideboard, Containment Priest. Uh, for one in a white, you get a human cleric with flash, so that's already fun. Uh, if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So this is one of the, the premier sideboard cards that hoses strategies like Reanimator, uh, Show and Tell, just anything that's trying to cheat things in play. It's a little weird in Death and Taxes because it does shot off your own Aether Vials, but that's usually a trade-off you're willing to make. Yeah, as someone who enjoys playing collected company decks, this is never a card that I want to see. As someone who enjoys playing against collected company decks, this is a card I always want to see. Next card. Our next card is Ponder. We're on to the blue cards now. This is one of my all-time favorite magic cards. It's a sorcery for a single blue that lets you look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order. Um, you may shuffle if you want, and then you draw a card. I've, I've shuffled with this card a, a non-zero amount of times, but... I just love just being able to look at the look at the top few cards and dictate my next couple plays. I I am a big Delver of Secrets player in various formats and this card just goes hand in hand with my little human insect friend. Any control player in Legacy is going to want to play set of this version just for the old border. This looks oh, so yes. good in that. <laughs> the next card is one of my favorite blue cards that was probably my first experience with not having a mana cost per se. And of course I'm talking about Ancestral Vision. Ancestral Vision is a very, very, very strange card for a lot of new players where you can't cast it for zero in normal ways. However, by paying one blue mana, you can have this exiled off in the distance with four time counters on it. As soon as that last time counter is gone and one will be removed for each of your upkeeps, you get to have target player draw three cards for free. This is one of my favorite tempo plays in, I'm going to say it again, Canadian Highlander. (laughs) I love having this in any commander deck that runs blue. Just to give you that little bit of tempo play, either in the first turn in commander where no one's doing anything, or Canadian Highlander where there's nothing for you to tempo out. And it just sets you up for a lot of power later in the game. Yeah, this was a card that uh, was running rampant in Legacy for a while when Shardless Bug was like the top deck for a bit. This... More than any other card that you could cascade into in that deck was what made it absolutely backbreaking. So this next card is a little similar to Ancestral Vision, just in a in a different way. It is Treasure Cruise. Um, it's also a sorcery that lets you draw three cards, but it has Delve. Uh, it costs seven and a blue, but you can remove cards from your graveyard to reduce that mana cost. Um, and I gotta tell you, I've cast this for a single blue many, many times. Uh, I 
have played it in formats like Canadian Highlander, but I've also played it everywhere from Pioneer to Modern, uh, and I've just always loved casting this card. Uh, it was rightfully banned in a handful of formats that I've played it in, um, but I'm always happy to cast it when I have the opportunity. It's always great when a card has to get banned in both Legacy and Popper. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, something <laughs> happened there. <laughs> Speaking of cursed cards that were brought to our Canadian Highlander group, this one's my fault. It's True Name Nemesis in Old Border. This is a card that I feel like deserves an Old Border because it's broken, unfun, and one of my most favorite magic cards. This is a Merfolk Rogue. It's a 3-1 for Blue Blue 1. That sounds terrible. However, as True Name Nemesis enters the battlefield, choose a player. True Name Nemesis has protection from the chosen player. This is a Commander Precon card that was way too powerful for everything else. I'm about to say, in Commander, this is extremely mediocre. It's definitely different when you only have one opponent and this card has protection from them and everything that they control. One of my favorite cube cards is Moldrifter. Um, it is an elemental creature for four and a blue with flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards. Or you can evoke it for two and a blue, whatever floats your boat. But I love this. I love this card so much. Uh, it pairs pretty nicely with Restoration Angel, which we mentioned earlier. And yeah, I, I love flying creatures. I love drawing cards. This just does so many things that I enjoy. And it's like a cute little fish elemental thing, too. There's a reason that the power scale is built around, is this better than Muldrifter? <laughs> Yeah, it's such a good card. It it works well in any limited format you stick it in, like cubes or just wild chaos stuff. It's fantastic in Popper, which I think is its main constructed home. But it's also one of those weird cards that I have never met anybody who hates Moldrifter is like, oh, that's not that good. Just like everybody is like, Moldrifter is the definition of a B plus. Yeah, how could you hate its cute little face? Speaking of winning over a player base... We have the last card we're going to talk about this week, and this is... Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, I'm giving you a C on that one. Yeah, that's fair. The last card we're talking about this week is Mystic Confluence. I say winning over a player base because it's rare that counter spells that get printed in modern magic times make it into older decks, just due to the fact that it's kind of tough to print a Counterspell, that's better than Counterspell. That's better than Mana League. That's better than Force of Will. All of these Counterspells that are much lower costed, less conditional. Mystic Confluence just lets you do so much with 5 mana at instant speed. Uh, it is a choose 3, and the important note here is you may choose the same mode more than once. Counter target spell, unless its controller pays 3 generic. Return target creature to its owner's hand, or draw a card. So this card could be an ancestral vision for yourself it could be a whole bunch of unsummons it could be countering multiple spells that doesn't happen often more likely it's just going to make sure that your opponent either has to pay a lot to get one spell off or just can't pay nine generic mana on top of their spell i I like this uh thing they're starting to do with their like rare counter spells where we aren't going to give you a cheap counter spell. We're going to give you a very expensive counter spell, but it also does all these other things. Like this and Sublime Epiphany, I think, are very good spots to be for very powerful counter spells. Mm-hmm. What do y'all think of the old borders and things like that? All of the stuff they're throwing in this set? I have the hot take that I typically don't like old bordered magic cards. And it turns out that what I don't actually like is not the old border, it's old text box and old text formatting. Because so far, every single one of the remastered borders, I have really, really enjoyed the old style border. Because the text is legible, makes sense, and isn't confusing to newer players. Which is my biggest gripe about old Magic cards, is so often there's Oracle text, or things are different than they are played nowadays compared to how they used to be played. And that just makes it very difficult for new players. So I'm loving all of this. Yeah, I'm with Jordan on this one. I find the font on old magic cards a little bit hard to read at times, but I love that they've put the rules text in the current font. And a lot of these cards, you know, I I'm very glad that a lot of the um, a lot of the cards that they've chosen for these new treatments have art that 
actually really suits the old borders. It isn't super modern or super realistic. Um, and it just looks really great. Yeah, I think Paradoxical Outcome in particular is a card that I was honestly surprised when it showed up in old border frame because I thought it got new art because it fits <laughs> so well to old style magic cards. Yeah. I really just like something I realized that I missed about the old border magic cards as opposed to the new one is the new border magic cards are very segmented out. Like they have the clear border lines around the art box and everything. And I like the just like beveled edges around it that make it look more like a window into something that makes it feel very much more magic-y planes walk walkie to me on a very like subconscious level yeah i totally get that so that's been our first episode of time spiral remastered previews for going off we're going to be doing two more episodes of this that'll be coming out in just a few days for the next one let's keep an ear out for that i've been chris i've been hallie and I've been Jordan. Keep an eye out for our pre-orders on CardKingdom.com. You can get all of your Time Spiral Remastered needs met there. And we will see you next time. <laughs>